Hello and welcome to the Origin MD channel. In this video we're going to be discussing the Golgara Constrictor deck. And the core of this deck is of course the card Windy Constrictor and the Rishka Puma Renegade that is able to make use of the uh, Constrictor's ability and some other friends. To be able to get our combo off we need some removal like the Fatal Push and the Vraska's Contempt that is able to deal with the most potent threats that we are facing. We have the value creatures as mid-game threats such as Trashing Brontodon and Ravenous Chupacabra. And finally we have the finishes in the Verderous Gearhulk and the Vraska the Relic Seeker that is able to deal with the late game and help us win the game. As for the main threats to our game plan in the current meta, we have the red removal such as Lightning Strike and a Braid that is able to deal with our Windy Constrictor without us getting the combo off, having some red creatures that are able to shrink and kill uh, our Windy Constrictor and other creature cards such as the Soul Scar Mage and the Goblin Chain Worlder combo. So our way to deal with those threats is to simply play the more mid-range plan to have our Fatal Push and Vraska's Contempt to deal with them and then to cast uh, the Winding Constrictor at the same time as other cards. And against the blue and white control, against counter spells and settle the wreckage, our only real opportunity to get them is simply to use the res if it's possible and to try and pressure them effectively as, long, as much as we can. I would not recommend this deck to completely new players and beginners, it's not the strongest deck, but it does have potential to uh, get you some decent wins in quick constructed, especially in the best of one. Now let's discuss each card in more detail. In our deck, since we're using green, we have the usual suspect, the Lanawa elves that allow us to ramp into our other spells, and if they get removed that's not such a big deal for the deck. We've got only one duress main board that allows us to discard a non-creature non-land card of our choice from the opponent's hand and if you are facing control decks a lot then you probably want to even run two main board but probably not many more. The recent addition from the Ether Vault is Fatal Push because it allows us to destroy cards such as Heart of Kirin and other two CMC creature spells quite easily. And if we get something removed this turn, then we can also use the Fatal Push to destroy something that costs four or less. So that is going to be widely useful in the current meta. We have three Adventurous Impulse that allows us to look at the top three cards of our library and then choose a creature or a land card accordingly depending on what we are in need of the most right now. Next up we have the Glint Slave Siphoner. It has Menace, it gives us energy when it enters the battlefield and it also allows us to um, pay two energy to draw a card and lose one life. It also gives us one energy when it attacks and if we have the Winding Constrictor in play, that becomes two energy, so that is definitely decent enough. But of course, one toughness is not really good for the card, especially in a format like we have right now with the Chain Whirlers in play. Next up, we have one of the core cards in our deck, and it's Winding Constrictor. And if we put one or more counter, uh, we gain more counters. So that is going to be extremely useful with some of the, our other cards in the deck. We have the moment of craving, only as a 2 off, to, for target creature getting minus 2, minus 2 until the end of turn and gaining 2 life. And this is going to be useful against Red the Quins, so that um, we are able to stem the aggro a little bit and take it to the later game. We have Rishka, Pima Renegade. When it enters the battlefield, we put a 1-1 counter on each of up to two target creatures, and each creature with a counter on it has tap, add green to your mana pool. So Rishka can be quite good, especially if we can cast the Windy Constrictor and Rishka at the same time. It puts uh, both of them out of the range of most of the removals, such as the Braid. 
but more on that a little later. I run only one Jade Light Ranger that explodes twice, and it can become at most a 4 3. But um, I didn't find this card to be that impactful in the current meta, it's just very difficult to keep it alive. On the other hand, we have 3 Trashing Brontodon, and for 3 mana, it's a 3 4, which is sold enough. And most importantly, if we pay one and sacrifice it, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment. So that allows us to uh, get some free wins against uh, God Pharaoh's Gift decks, for example, if we're able to draw and protect the Brontodons. Next up, we have some value creatures in Revenant's Chupacabras. When it enters the battlefield, it destroys a creature an opponent controls, so it's almost always a good play against cards like uh, the um, Chain Whirler and some other value generating cards that cost 3 or 4. We also have Raska's Contempt. Uh, we, uh, it allows us to exile a creature or planeswalker and gain to life at instant speed. And if you have more copies, then I would probably run 3 in this list, maybe even more depending on where the meta goes. Overall, just a very solid card. Rounding up the 4 CMC, we have Khan, the Sign of Urza. It's a planeswalker that allows us to draw additional cards and then bring them back from, from the exile depending on what our opponent chooses. And also, since we have some artifacts, it's possible to just create a colorless construct artifact creature tokens that are able to grow and just uh, keep us alive until we are able to stabilize even better. Next up, we have the Verdurous Gearhulk. It it's a 4 4 trample and it distributes 4 plus 1 counters among any number of creatures we control. So it is possible to run two of those if you would like to do so. And with Winding Constrictor, it can really get out of hand extremely quickly. We also have the opportunity to ramp into the Gear Hulk with the Lanawa Elves and with the Rishka. So I would consider uh, playing two of those if you have the extra copies. Next up, we have the Walking Ballista, which is a very interesting card because it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. It is interesting because it's at the very least a 2 mana spell, and then it becomes a 1-1, one, one, but it doesn't really have the upper limit. So with our ramp and with our Winding Constrictor ability, the Walking Ballista is an extremely potent threat that is able to close out the games all by itself if we're able to resolve it properly. Rounding up our finishes, we have the <coughs> Vraska the Relic Seeker, and she can create 2-2 two, two Black Pirate Creature tokens with Menace, she can destroy artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, so that is also extremely relevant for us. And finally, uh, a creature's uh, a player's life total becomes one with her ultimate ability, so that is also one of the ways that we are able to close out the games. The only thing to watch out for in the current standard is the Disallow, which actually nullifies the last ability. So if you're playing against a deck that has blue, well, it might be problematic to use Frasca's last ability. Okay, as for the mana base, we have two Ifnian Deadlands. By sacrificing a desert, we can put two minus one counters on a creature, and this is our one of our ways that we can deal with cards like Hazoret. We've got four swamps and nine forests for basics. Two blossom, blooming marsh uh, that enters the battlefield untapped if we have two or less lands. So that is going to be extremely useful, as well as the woodland cemeteries that are untapped if we already control a swamp and a forest. And finally, we have four edder hubs because we are able to. Uh, use our energy counters to add one mana of any color, and this allows us not to get too slowed down. Now, let's play some games. Okay, what have we here? We're going first, we've got the Winding Constrictor, Rishka, Feral Push, let's keep this hand. Play out a Swamp, so that we have the Feral Push should we need it? 
I think that the Fanatical Firebrand is not going to be the scariest thing, so getting hit for one is fine. Let's play out the Wind and Constrictor. See if our opponent has a removal spell for it. A Willy Goblin. Wow. Treasure. That's something interesting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think playing out the Rishka and growing both our Constrictor and Rishka itself is going to be the better choice. Now the question is whatever we are going to attack. And I think I don't mind going on an offensive here. We've got the Fatal Push as well as Chupacabras waiting for our opponent's creatures. Gate to the Afterlife. Alright. So, no real reason to ramp here, I think we just go ahead and press on the attack. Okay. Deals one damage to us by sacrificing the Fanatical Firebrand. Gets to draw and discard cards in preparation for the gift. Populist the graveyard too. So we're going to end the combat and play out the Brontodon. Okay. Alright, we're going first, and we've got Duress and Fatal Push, as well as Lanawa Elves. Let's keep this hand, see if we can survive long enough to cast Frasca. Let's go ahead and go for Duress, see what our opponent is up to. Okay, so this is going to be a Red Deck Wins. Not sure if we have enough to survive this long against such a deck. But I guess we're going to find out soon enough. Okay. Let's see. Our opponent has the Crop Crusher and Lanary Storm. So... I guess I'll have to take the trade with the Lanary Elves. What do we have? We have double green, yep. So, Jade Light Ranger probably seems like a good choice. Alternatively, Trashing Brontodon to block some of those creatures. Yeah, I think I'll take the Brontodon. Okay, not going to block, if our opponent is just going to attack like that. Riggin Runner, alright. There is at least some good news for us. Because our opponent missed a land drop, so we're just going to end the turn. And if our opponent doesn't remove the Lanawa Elves, we'll be able to cast out Raska sooner rather than later. I also have the Feral Push. So if he takes out the Lanawa Elves, we'll be able to trigger the Revolt for the Feral Push. He's likely going to Exert. Okay, it doesn't attack with a fanatical firebrand. No, he does attack. Okay, 
So six damage coming our way. I don't think. We're going to do anything about that, so here we are. Let's tap down the Lanoa Elves, get our Walking Ballista for two. Let's ping our opponent's fanatical firebrand straight away. And then say go. And keep our feral push on the ready when our opponent plays out some value creature that he's going to attack with. Alright. He is going to attack. Very interesting. Alright. We are going to block. Let's see if he has a combo trick. And the question is whatever we want to waste the fatal push. So he's going to braid. And yeah, I think I think I am going to just push this. So that our opponent's braid is not going to be of that much value. Alright, here we are. Okay, so I think Chupacabra is a good choice. Just get rid of this Uncrop Crusher. So, for combat... I think I'm fine with just attacking with the Brontodon once. And if our opponent wants to trade the Captain Lanry Stone for the Chupacabra, I'm happy to oblige. Okay, does exactly that. So let's try to trade. Let's see if our opponent has another combo trick. No, he doesn't. So let's go to our turn. Okay, we got ourselves a Chupacabra number two. So I think... In this case, I'm going to attack with the Walking Ballista. Okay, let's grow the Walking Ballista. Hit our opponent for two. Does our opponent have a Magma Spray or another removal? That remains to be seen, but in any case, since our Walking Ballista is taking so much flak. We're just going to remove one count and ping our opponent for one. This lightning strike is the lightning strike that doesn't hit our face. And the longer the game goes, the better it is for us. Against the red deck wins. Okay. So Hazred here. Mm, looks like we're going to take five. And let's hope that we can get one more land. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So, do we attack? Hmm. It looks like us missing the land drop is going to be even more hurtful. Okay. Attack at will. Do we attack here? If our opponent has a hasty creature, we're dead, so I think we're not going to be attacking. Okay, has five mana. Attacks. We're going to sacrifice a pirate here. Going to activate the ability most likely. Um, what? Alright. 
I think that's not what our opponent intended. He should have by all rights won this game, but now it's not so surefire. Because if he doesn't get rid of Ras Rask, we can use her ultimate, make him go down to one life. And that would be game over for our opponent. So he really needs a burn spell to get us. Okay. We're going to make our opponent's life exactly one. And win the game. So let's see, we have got the Larama Elves to potentially go for Trash and Brontodon. So let's keep this hand. We are also going first. So that's almost always a good sign right now. Let's play out the Larama Elves, see if our opponent has an answer for it. Okay, black. A grasping Scoundrel. Interesting. Well, let's play out a forest, and let's play out the Trashing Brontodon. It's also going to be able to block the Grasping Scoundrel. And since we have two black mana sources, we'll be able to play out the Chupacabra if we need to. Okay, double black. Phantom Flip Captain. Alright, uh, the fleet captain seems like a good enough target. It's a question of whatever we want to go for Chupacabra Walking Ballista, and I think in this case, going for Walking Ballista um, to have two counters and just getting rid of the fleet captain is going to be a good choice. And should we're not going to be attacking. And should our opponent get rid of the Walking Ballista, we can ping the Grasp Scoundrels in response. So that's also a decent enough solution, I guess. Reverse Ambush. Alright. Exiles the Trash and Brontodon, that's fine. We still have the Push and Contempt to deal with our opponent's creatures. Attacks for two. I think I'm actually just going to take it. Next turn we can grow our Ballista, or alternatively, what we can do is just use Khan. So we can create a Coldless Construct that is a 2-2, and I think we can just attack our opponent. And the turn. I'm sure we can trade uh, that Construct for the Grasping Scoundrel here. Dire Flick ne ne Neck Breaker. Okay, let's see if our opponent attacks. Alright, has a si sizable 4 1 heading our way, and we are fine with trading with the construct. It's our turn. Alright, another Vrosk's Contempt. Not too bad. Let's get rid of this Dire Fleet Neck Breaker. A plus 1 con. Okay, let's see if our opponent gives us the land or the Glinsleaf Siphoner. Mm -hmm. Don't mind either of those. Alright, I think that was a wise choice. Still, it's going to be pretty hard for our opponent with the black red vam uh, with the black red pirates. I had played the deck and once you're in such a board state, it's just it's just unlikely our opponent is going to win. Like, right now we have a wooden cemetery, so we've got 5 mana. Let's continue the value train with Khan, continue to draw cards. 
okay we've got another guaranteed land so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grow our walking ballista put a 1-1 one -one counter on it I'm going to ping the trailblazer for one and I'm just going to attack with everything so our opponent is down to 14 Khan is at 5 loyalty and we're at 18 life and we have so much removal that it's unlikely our opponent is going to win the game <coughs> flagship is fine a rigging runner is fine too it's crew 3 so yeah, there is that. So we can simply push our opponent. We have three, four, five, six. Well, we can just use Vraska to get rid of the rigging run here. I mean, we just went to value town, so I don't see our opponent winning this. Let's see what our opponent gives us. Gives us a land. That's fine as well. Let's go ahead and attack. We've got the fatal push in case of an emergency, but I just don't see it happening. Okay, so our opponent is going to be able to take out the walking ballista. But that means that our opponent still has only 11 life and one card in hand, so... Buccaneer, going to enter the battlefield. Do we just fatal push it? Yeah, I guess we do. Don't want to delay this game for too long. We have the Vraska's Contempt for the fell flagship if we want to. Okay, I think we've got enough mana. And our opponent has conceded. Okay, we're going first. And uh, it looks like we only have the adventurous impulse to... to keep us company with our hand. So I think I'm going to say go and see what our opponent is playing. And would you guess it? It's the mono red. So I think we're going to go for it like that and use the adventurous impulse as well. So what do we have? I think that a trashing Brontodon is going to be better. Since it's beefy enough. So let's see if our opponent has removal. Yes, indeed. Our opponent has shock for the Lanawa Elves. Hits us for two. Okay. Let's play out the trash and Brontodon. See if our opponent has more ways to shrink our Brontodon with the Soul Scar Mage ability. Has a Crop Crusher instead. So he's going to exert and prevent me from blocking, and he's going to hit for four. That is completely fine. Okay, so over here I think it's fine to go for the Jade Light Ranger. Let's go ahead and explore. So Fatal Push in the library for sure. And no, we're not going to be attacking. Let's see if our opponent has more removal. So that is going to be an Elshik Kenra. But still will be able to block with the Trash and Brontodon. So I'm not sure our opponent is going to be attacking. And that is indeed the case. So I think we want to play out the Gear Hulk. And we want to grow our creatures. So 6... Yeah, that probably makes sense to make it 5-6. Do we attack our opponent for 9 this turn? 
Thing we do, we have the Vraska's Contempt and Fatal Push. If our opponent has something like a Hazard, a land, and he will be able to attack, that is 5 and 3. That is 8, 9, 11. Let's go ahead and attack. Okay. Opponent is down to 11. I need to have something extremely solid. Alright, it looks like we won. Okay, we are going first. So the question is, do we keep a hand with no green? I think we can still play this, so I'm going to keep this. Let's see how it works out. Play out a swamp. Red. Alright. Looks like all the matches are going to be red in the foreseeable future. Well. Let's see what our opponent has next. Looks like not having fatal push in an opening hand is a wrong opening hand. Hmm. Alright, I, I, I think I can still accommodate that. Heart of Kieran. Alright. Let's go ahead and have a look at our opponent's hand. What exactly does he have there? Uh huh. Done. He is going to have the pollen, but doesn't have removal, at least for now. So, do we go for walking ballista here or not? I think we don't go for walking ballista yet. He is playing out the Pala and crewing the heart of Kieran, so he is going to hit us for 5. Unless he is afraid of a fatal push. So let's bluff at least like we have it. And let's see if our opponent is going to fall for the bluff or just going to go for it. Okay, not going to fall for the bluff. Hits us for six. Oh man. Alright, at least we got ourselves our feral push. So we've got that going our way. So let's see. If we go for the evening deadlands and get ourselves the Rishka. We are not going to be attacking. Just waiting for our opponent to tap for the heart of Kirin. Alright, plays out the scrounger, most likely. No, taps for three mana. Alright. Scrap hip scrounger. What was the next mana though? Okay, a bombed courier. Okay. So, the Pala or... yep. Just going to go for it like this. Alright. So, we are going to Feral push the Heart of Kieran. We need to get rid of the pollen, so we're going for it like that. And like this, I suppose, there are four cards here. No, actually, let's block like this. Then he is not going to sacrifice. Now, 
We've got essentially five mana here. It's pointless to get rid of the bomb at Korea. So I mean the scrap your scrounger gets back anyway as well, so I'm guessing I'm going to tap Rishka. And I'm going to go for the Chupacabra to get rid of the Scrounger, even though it's not the most efficient way. So do we fatal push our opponent and let him draw? I think not. I think I'm just going to say go. Alright, to scrap his crown just is quite troublesome. Let's go ahead and get rid of our opponent's bomb at Korea. He's going to sacrifice it, but at least he's not going to get his fifth card. Alright. Has a lightning strike. And able to repopulate the hand. So it doesn't look like this game is winnable for us. That is quite unfortunate. I am we are going to draw and try to get more lands and more relevant things for us. So that we'll be able to trade with the Scrap Cube Scrounges. Because our opponent doesn't have an unlimited number of creatures in his graveyard. So our opponent is not going to give us the land. Well, the threats just continue to multiply. Alright, that's good for us. Although I doubt that's going to be of that much help. The order has really been messed up. Okay, this allows us to go for the Larva Elves and still being able to cast the Vraska's Contempt on the hut. So I think I'm just going to take it. Opponent should really have attacked us in the face. But he's going to bring back the Scrapy Scrounger. All right. Let's see if our opponent is going to attack Khan again. And in all honesty, I'm not going to be blocking the Scrapio Scrounger, but he attacks to the face. Still not going to be blocking. <sighs> In this situation we probably want to create a token that is going to be a 2-2 because we have a ballista in place so that we are able to trade with our opponent. We don't want the toolcraft exemplar to be able to crew the heart of Kirin, so we're going to 
destroy it before it's able to get the buff with the walking ballista. He crews the heart of Kiran with one of the scrap hips and it looks like we will have to take We'll have, we will have to take 4 damage and we'll have to trade our construct with the scrap heap. Okay. So, do we have a new lease for life? <laughs> I'm not so sure, but let's go ahead and play out Froskan, get rid of the heart. Not a lot of elf to jump block, I think it's a yes. Khan, I think, plus one. If our opponent doesn't have burn... Alright, no attacks. Does have a lightning strike in his deck, so if he top decks a lightning strike we are dead. Actually, he brings back the scrounger, so... We are close to that anyway, since he has it like a recurring threat. Speedway Fanatic. Alright. Well, Speedway Fanatic is not going to kill us because we still have the walking ballista. For one. Unfortunately, that's something we have to do, so we're just going to be sacrificing this, and yeah, I think we can just ping our opponent once. Okay, we're still surviving. We have the Revenant Chupacabra, but I think another walking ballista is going to be better plus one con again draw at least another land so that's good so we've got six seven now do we need another block or are we good with a ballista for three I think I'm going to tap it like that. Add colorless, add colorless. Okay. All right. So this way we can block one of them and discharge the ballista against the other one and keep our feral push for something extra. Or just, you know, we're quite close to losing anyway, so might as well just feral push this one. I hope our opponent runs out of creatures to exile. Okay, alright, 
let's see if we have anything extremely relevant here. No, we don't. So I think I'm going to use cons plus one ability one more time. Get some additional card draw. All right. Getting ourselves some more of those lands so that we can grow our ballista. So I think that is going to be our plan for the foreseeable future. Let's see. Yep. Looks like we're just putting two more counters on the ballista. Essentially, if we hold off for two more turns, we will be able to use the ultimate of Frasca. And if our walking ballista is in play, we win. But that depends on whatever our opponent has hasty creatures or something like burn. He's got just one more creature card in the graveyard. Okay. Has a veteran motorist. Scries two. So he is getting closer to this burn spell. Whatever it may be. Okay. Let's put another counter. All right. So, do we have anything relevant here? He can still exile his Depala. He can get back two scrounges if we use the Chupacabra. So I think I'm still going to be drawing some additional cards with Khan. Okay, yeah, the rest is not going to be of that much help. So we've got another Swamp. That means we've got 9-10 mana. So we can go for an Adventure Simples. Let's see. Yeah, I think a Winding Constrictor is good. Since essentially that allows us to put an additional counter on the Walking Ballista with this. Let's go for the Duress and see what our opponent has. Has just two other hubs. So, still we're not going to be attacking, but we can play out another Lanova Elf, since we still have another one that we can tap for mana uh, to get a Walking Ballista in order. And our opponent will have to exile his, Dep uh, his Depala to return one Scrap his Scrounger. But the second one is going to be a problem. He doesn't have any more creatures left. Has a weather light. Okay. Let's see if our opponent attacks. He doesn't. Hmm, interesting. Well, <laughs> I certainly don't mind blocking because we know our opponent's hand. Let's grow it as well. So it becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Alright. So let's see, can we actually kill our opponent? How much is the crew here? Crew 3, so he will be able to crew it. So no, I don't think we will be able to kill him. Although 7, yeah, we're actually able to kill him. Alright, 
because we can discharge the walking ballista. Alright, let's just attack with everything. <laughs> we were able to survive. His scrap his crown just can block though, and then he can crew. Yeah, so that is the only one that is problematic. But we can just attack with the walking ballista and see if he is going to do that. Because we can grow it with the winding constrictor for unfavorable trade. Alright, so he goes for it like this, we're going to say yes. Oh yeah, I forgot that I could have used Vraska to get rid of the weather light. My bad. Although he, yeah, even if he did, even if he tried to crew something in response, we would have won the game. What can I say? Sorry. Let's see if this is going to cost us the game. If our opponent top decks the removal and I get punished, we'll find out next turn. So now even... Let's see big question. Is it burn spell or not? Okay, it's not. Well, <laughs> okay, our opponent goes first. We do have the Feral Push and the Rest here as well as the Rishka. Okay, let's keep this hand. Say hello to our friend. Do we go for the duress? I think so, yeah. Let's have a look at what our opponent has. Let's get rid of the lightning strike. Banter a little bit, because we don't really have anything that we can play either. And our opponent has the goblin chain world that he can play. Okay, interesting. Not going to cast out anything else. I think I'm fine with just not playing out Rishka, since it's just going to get upgraded. Alright, that's fine for now. So, do we go for the Rishka? I think not. I think we still wait and get some value from our ravenous Chupacabra. Alright, and on Crop Crusher. Our Fatal Push is not going to work on it, so... Let's take the hit. But we are going to be able to... Get some value out of our Chupacabra here. So it's going to get abraded. Yep. Unfortunately, there isn't much we can do about it. So chances are our opponent is going to be able to attack with Hazard because he has two mana apart from the chain problem. But let's see. Okay, this card's a card. It's a land. Hmm, interesting. No attacks. Our turn. Alright. In this case, I'm pretty sure I just want my Vraskas. To create a pirate. Okay, 6 mana, so has 3 and 3, most likely. Goblin Chain World deals 1 damage. Can attack with Hazard. And yeah, I think I'm just going to block. I 
Okay. So let's play out the Windy Constrictor. Since this is the case, let's stop the evening deadlines for Colorless and play out Rishka and keep our Feral push alive. We're going to grow our creatures here, so that's going to be quite useful. We can destroy the Chain Whirler as well if we want to. Hmm. I think I'm fine with just having a pirate because we still have the fatal push. So if our token gets destroyed, then we'll be able to use the fatal push on the whirlwind. And that seems to be the highest target in, in terms of priority for the fatal push because Hazard cannot be destroyed. Okay. This causes another Hazard. So we're getting closer to using Vraska properly. Okay. Let's use Vraska again. Let's tap down our Edda Hops and Evening Deadlands. Actually, we can put the minus counters on Hazard, but I think we have got enough creatures here not to worry about it for at this particular moment, and that requires sacrificing deserts. So let's go for the con. Plus one con. Okay, so we've got another copy of a Feral Push. We are not going to be attacking, of course. And just hope that our opponent doesn't have Burn for Vraska. Or something like a Glorybringer to close out the game effectively. This card's a card, that's a good sign. Alright, it's our victory. I'd like to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.